Hi everyone, I'm Shelly and you're watching There's No Place Like Home. Today's video is just going to be me exploring some things that I've been looking at on the internet. I'm kind of taking a break from the old world buildings and Tartaria and that entire topic mainly because of the passing of our brother Rob Skiba, who really was a pillar of the biblical cosmology community. And so I really wanted to get into some topics that maybe I'm sure that a lot of you who are watching my videos already know all about this stuff. But the main reason that I started my question, the narrative series was because my channel has mainly been geared more towards homeschooling parents or parents who have some issues with the public education system. And so a lot of the people who actually were originally watching my channel didn't know much about the the things that I talk about. They had never heard of them. So really my question, the narrative series was never meant to be a deep dive into anything. It was just meant to be an introduction into different topics, maybe a springboard that people can start researching things for themselves. And this is certainly going to be one of those cases today. I've done a couple of videos on the topic of flat earth and you know again they were just really the basics just for for people who never really heard about the topic or never really explored it and you know this is one of those things that back in 2017 I saw a flat earth video pop up on YouTube because that was before all the censoring happened and I thought to myself wow how could anybody ever think the earth is flat and then i'm like okay well i'm just gonna watch this because i'm bored and i need to know why people would think this and then i watched the video and then i watched another and another and another and 10 months later i was in the camp of yeah i'm pretty sure that the earth is flat just like what seems to be described or actually is described in the bible and so while today's video is not specifically flat earth I'm going to be talking about the Antarctic Circle versus the Arctic Circle because we've always been taught that they're pretty much the, the same thing climate wise because they both are supposed to get the same amount of sunlight every year and that's based on the heliocentric model but we're actually going to take a look at how they really are at least you can never say how things really are because we don't know how things really are, but how things at least are being projected to us. Um, and we need to kind of start weighing the things that they're saying. So which pole is colder? Both the Arctic and the Antarctic South Pole are cold because they don't get any direct sunlight. However, the South Pole is a lot colder than the North Pole. And so let's just take a look at some photos of, see I typed in Antarctic Circle here. And the reason that I typed in Antarctic Circle and Arctic Circle is because they are both about the same latitude. Um, so the Antarctic Circle is 66 point, I believe, five degrees latitude south of the equator, while the Arctic Circle is interestingly 66.33, both two very interesting numbers, um, degrees north of the equator. And so that's where I thought that we would be able to get that, you know, a better uh, comparison of temperatures. So Antarctic Circle, these are some photos that we see here. Now you do happen to see this one, but as you can see, this is Arctic, Antarctic, and I believe it said Greenland. So even though this one here looks like it has, you know, the, the plants and everything here, that is actually probably Greenland, but it's definitely the Arctic Circle. That one is not Antar Antarctica. Um, and this one here, even though it popped up under Antarctic Circle, this is in Alaska. So you just have to be careful when looking at some of these images. But what you will see is that the Antarctic Circle, at least what they're showing us, is mainly ice. And I actually talked about the Antarctic Antarctica in another video. I think I called it the edge of the world. So this is what you typically see, you know, when, when you're looking at photos of Antarctica. Um, then when you click on Arctic Circle, where it is supposed to be the same latitude and get the same amount of sunlight as Antarctica, you will see that there's a lot more going on up here. you got much more greenery. So much more flora going on here. Absolutely beautiful and certainly not all the snow that you see in 
Antarctica. And yeah, the pictures of Antarctica are beautiful too, but they're nothing like this. You're, you're just not going to find photos like this of Antarctica. And you have to wonder why. So what does the mainstream tell us? Well, the mainstream tells us that both the Arctic North Pole and the Antarctic South Pole are cold because they don't get any direct sunlight. The sun is always low on the horizon, even in the middle of summer. In winter, the sun is so far below the horizon that it doesn't come up at all for months at a time. So the days are just like the nights, cold and dark. Even though the North Pole and South Pole are polar opposites, they both get the same amount of sunlight. But the South Pole is a lot colder than the North Pole. Why? Well, the poles are polar opposites in other ways too. So they tell us that the Arctic Ocean is surrounded by land. Sorry, the Arctic is ocean surrounded by land. So, you know, that kind of also goes against what some, what, what we see sometimes in maps. Some maps show that there was land once at the North Pole, but again, I get it. The maps that were shown are probably wrong too. Such a sad state of affairs in the world today, but it tells us that the Arctic is ocean surrounded by land and the Antarctic is land surrounded by ocean. The ocean under the Arctic ice is cold, but still warmer than the ice. So the ocean warms the air a bit. Antarctica is dry and high. Under the ice and snow is land, not ocean. And I don't know, to me, you would think that land would be warmer than ocean, but okay. And it's got mountains. The average elevation of Antarctica is about 7,500 feet. And the higher you go, the colder it gets. And that, that makes sense. And then it shows us that the average mean temperature in the North Pole in the summer is 32 degrees Fahrenheit, zero degrees Celsius. And in the South Pole, it's minus 18 degrees Fahrenheit or 28.2 degrees Celsius. I'm sorry, minus 28.2 degrees Celsius. So that's a pretty big difference for two areas that get or that supposedly get the same amount of sunlight. And then in the winter, the average temperature of the North Pole is minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 40 degrees Celsius. And the South Pole is minus 76 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 60 degrees Celsius. So again, you know, it's, it's a pretty big difference for areas that, that are supposed to get the same amount of sunlight. And so it's just showing you a little graphic of the heliocentric model and the earth being tilted and how um, sometimes the North Pole will get more sunlight, but then other times it will be tilted away. And then that's when the South Pole gets the sunlight. And that is really what the heliocentric model tells us. And one, th one question that I had about this was just, if the equator, they always tell us that the equator is the hottest part of the earth. And to me, that never made sense that the equator actually looks like this. But if you actually look at the earth, when they show, when they show us pictures of the earth, the, the photos are always straight up and down. They don't show us the earth on a tilt, yet the warmest areas are always this way. So to me, it only ever made sense that the equator, if this were the case, that they, because they get the most amount of sunlight, the earth should be this way, not the earth. The equator should be this way, not tilted. If these are always the areas that are the warmest, and again, I really just came to that conclusion because when they show us these, what I believe are CGI photos of the earth, they don't show us the earth tilted. They show us straight up and down. Here, I'll show you. So they always show us photos like this and it's, it's not tilted on its axis, at least not that I know of. It looks to me like to be straight up and down and the equator is in the center. And what is in the center is where you will find the warmest places on earth, not this way or this way. So it's just a question that I have. Anyway, let's look at the wildlife differences in the two areas. So let's look at the wildlife of the Arctic. Actually, you know what? Let's do the Antarctic first because it, it'll be easier to see the difference. So here we have Antarctic animals and a list of Antarctic wildlife. And so, you know, a lot of times you think, oh, well, there's no life in Antarctica, but there actually is. Um, there are penguins, there are whales and seals, there are other animals. So even though it's freezing cold down there, there are animals, there's birds. There are, well, penguins are birds too, obviously, but so there are animals that can survive down there. So, okay, you know, there, there are definitely animals down in Antarctica, but let's take a look at the wildlife of the Arctic Circle. The Arctic Circle, 
the wildlife is actually much, much more varied because these animals are able to live on land. Why? Because it is warmer. So an area of land that gets, that supposedly gets the same amount of sunlight as Antarctica is able to have this vast array of wildlife that lives up there on top of the flora in comparison to what you see in Antarctica. And so, yeah, so they tell us that, oh, well, the difference is because the Arctic Circle is surrounded by land and um, Antarctica is surrounded by ice. Okay. But what seems actually to me to be more feasible is if we look, oops, that's not the one that I want. So this is the azimuthal equidistant projection map. And this is actually what, what people refer to as the flat earth map, but honestly, like we don't know any maps that are correct. We, we have no confirmation of what maps could possibly be correct. But if this one is correct, it would actually make more sense of the difference between the Arctic Circle and Antarctica. And so a lot of people will, will wonder, well, how is that possible? Well, the reason is because if the earth is actually shaped like this and not a sphere, the sun would actually circle this way, out like a spiral. And so what that means, and that's how the seasons actually happen. And so what that means, and then it comes back in again. This is why we have videos of the Arctic Circle with the 24-hour sun, because it is right up here in the middle, circling. Now, they will tell you that they have video of a 24-hour sun in Antarctica. And I talked about this in the other video because the interesting thing is that if you look here, if the sun is actually moving the way that it shows us, there will never be a 24-hour sun in Antarctica because it is never going to be visible in all of Antarctica at one time. That only happens in the Arctic. If you go to the videos where they show you that they tell you are in Antarctica and they tell you here's the 24 hour sun, if you actually watch the time on the time lapse and if you watch the shadows, you can see that it is paused and skipped at certain times and large chunks of time will go past and all of a sudden they just skip everything and go back to where they started. They are not showing you a 24 hour time lapse. It is edited. <laughs> um, so that is the difference. So it would make a, a much bigger difference if we have the sun in the summer months in the Arctic is spending a lot more time up there. Whereas when it is down here in Antarctica, it, it's got a lot more distance to cover. And yeah, they're not going to get as much sunlight as what the Arctic does. So, you know, and I never really, I never thought much about this stuff. I, I never quite understood the whole equator thing and why everything at the middle of the earth actually seemed to be the warmest and not tilted like they tell us it is. Because yeah, if this would be tilted, I don't know. It, it just doesn't make sense to me. Maybe some of you, I know that some of you will say something in the comments because I know that there's going to be people there who are like, what are you talking about? Because I always have people like that in my comments. So hello to all of you. I look forward to hearing from you. But anyway, those were just the thoughts that I had today. I wanted to bring this up to you to just see if, if you ever thought about the difference of between Antarctica and the Arctic? Like, did you know that there was such a huge difference in the flora and fauna? Did you know there was such a huge difference in the temperature? Did you ever think about why that could possibly be if, as we're told, they're supposed to get the same amount of sunlight? To me, it just, it makes way more sense to believe that we are living somewhere that looks more like this than the convoluted stories that they tell us based on their heliocentric model. Anyway, that's all that I have for you today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet and would like to hear more of what I have to say, I would love if you would do that. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave one either here or over on Instagram. And if you like my work and would like to check out my Patreon page, I will leave a link in the description box for that as well. And I hope you have a great day.